I'm here inside a prototype testing lab where teams are busy at work running a series of tests looking for potential hardware reliability issues. We're gonna get a behind the scenes look at some of these tests. Pressure in here is high, not just because this is literally a pressure chamber, but because if the team misses something, it could cost literally tens of millions of dollars. Most of this was filmed in the pre-mask era because what we test here is secret. Like right now in 2021, I cannot show you this because it hasn't been released yet. This is Brad. He's our tour guide and the lab manager. We're in what he likes to call the robotics room, which is packed full of specialized equipment to run specialized tests. The first test we're going to look at is a probe flexing test. So we'll clamp the probe in the flip flopper and it will flex at that strain relief point thousands of times. We do other uh, like solenoid uh, encoder testing where we have a robot that um, goes back and forth thousands of times. Okay, I always pictured we had someone in the basement who just kind of flexed the cables and that was their, their whole job. That, that was the old method. <laughs> okay. 9,999, 10,000. Okay, next axis. What? This is the Hemholtz coil. A Helmholtz coil is two coils that create a very consistent magnetic field when you run current through them. The distance between them is the radius of the coils. And it also picks up magnetic fields, so we turn on our product and find out how much magnetic energy it is emitting. So this is a calibrated golf ball. The pickup wand has to be within a certain distance, but not too close and not too far away. So we will take this calibrated golf ball and run it along the instrument and see how much magnetics are being uh, emitted from the product through the pickup. Can you go a little to the left? I don't know, you're out of space. <laughs> Touche. Kind of what we have here is the equivalent mm -hmm. of a medieval test equipment torture device. Is that accurate? You could call it the rack. The rack. Okay. <laughs> we clamp the cable on either end and it applies pressure. If something breaks, like the center conductor or the outer jacket, then there'll be a large reduction in pressure, and then you can find out what stress point that that occurred at. So if you ever have to like stretch your budget or anything, you could use that tool? We have staff meetings on Monday. I always okay. give them stretch goals. Stretch goals, oh, right. This next room is full to the brim of giant chambers. We call it the South Lab. It's to the south of the North Lab. And here they do halt testing or highly accelerated life testing. There are a few different tricks you can use to artificially age electronics. We will take the product to its extremes. Extreme temperatures, extreme humidity, and extreme vibrations will cause failures sooner than normal. This is basically an engineering shortcut that helps you find long-term quality issues without having to wait a long time. There's a whole science behind this. Typically, our testing temperatures range between minus 40 and 70 degrees Celsius and up to 95% relative humidity. Some tests are short, but some run for a pretty long time. Here's the team testing a couple UXR oscilloscopes that hadn't been released yet. One of them has been in this chamber over half of a year, so it could be simulating uh, like five years of actual life. There are equations that spit out how much time you simulated. Sometimes tests run a lot longer than six months, like the one going on in this walk-in temperature chamber. These products have been in here up to two years and beyond. Now, you know I had to go in. I think I saw 60 degrees C on the control thing out here, so I'm not gonna like turn into a turkey. I hope not. Okay. I also hope oh, not. I'm off. more of a ham. <laughs> <laughs> okay, here we go. Oh, it's loud. It is so loud and hot. Once the oscilloscopes are set up in the chamber, they get constantly turned off and on and off and on and off and on at different rates to check different things. Some of these products I'm sure have cycle power 200,000 times. For testing memory, some are left in a constant running mode. Others are set up to test power supplies and boot systems, so they get power cycled constantly. It is really hot in here. Let's, uh, okay. whoo. Thermatron was actually my college nickname, so it's nice. kind of fun to bring that back. Nice. And power supplies are a pretty common point of failure on all electronics. Is there anything you can do to test specific brands of capacitors or anything like that? 
Yes, we will take different uh, brands of capacitors of the same ratings and then evaluate, and we want to be using quality parts in our products. If we find a vendor that is not living up to our quality standards, then they get blacklisted, obviously, and, and we use the, the more quality components. They also test just the power supplies themselves. It's cheaper than testing a whole product, and they can get a head start by testing them long before the main equipment prototypes are built and ready. So in here is probably like the equipment abuse room. Is that a fair description? We call it the mechanical room. But okay, we have a couple of things going on. We have a shake table hooked up to a UXR. And this is Ryan. So we have this set up in the side-to-side uh, -side orientation. So we'll do a few tests like this, uh, some with it running and some with it not running. That's a little bit more aggressive. This is a very common approach for halt testing. You test it while it's running to figure out how much stress a device can take and still do its job, and then you turn it off, shake it harder, and see how much it can take before it breaks. This helps you decide how to spec your device. Yeah, so these are like the power levels, and we're actually really low. Okay. And that's what you can have. That's what the heck you're done. They've also glued on some accelerometers to measure the g-forces in different axes. So the powered off vibration test was noticeably more aggressive overall compared to the powered on test. Can you describe some equipment carnage throughout history that could happen in a scenario like this? Oh, we've seen all kinds of things happen, like uh, screws and nuts get shaken off, uh, heat sinks, oh gosh, solder balls can get cracked. Relays will stop uh, functioning occasionally, and we go back and shore things up mechanically, whichever method makes the most sense. Next, we head to one of my favorite places in the building, the North Lab. It is so much quieter in here. It's it's kind of like, and it's a little cooler. It's just like, oh. In here is our anechoic chamber. Can we go in there? Is that we a, sure can. Okay. So what is an anechoic chamber? I'm glad you asked, 2019 Daniel. An anechoic chamber is basically a walk-in Faraday cage lined with fancy foam that absorbs sound and electromagnetic waves. It's kind of like a cave, actually, is what it feels like. These rooms are required for testing audio output levels and electromagnetic emissions. There are stringent government requirements that all products have to meet before they can be sold. And on this team, we have safety engineers that can do their own testing and submit the test data to the CSA group and UL for certification. We don't need a third-party lab for that. We used this same room to test car key range boosters, which was a super fun video. But this room also gets used throughout the design cycle. How much are R&D engineers coming down here and getting kind of a, a gut check of how they're doing? They test the device, the products quite frequently. We're very fortunate to have a PhD. So he is very involved with R&D. And even in the prototype stages, he is looking at the printed circuit boards for shielding and ensuring that uh, high frequency traces are shielded correctly and giving good suggestions back to R&D. Are you ready? This is just a bit of what goes on here. There's a lot more. If you like this video, let me know in the comments. I'd love to do more like this. There are labs like this all over the world. Keysight University Live is still going on. There are some winners right here. And also that Field Fox video is here if you wanna go check that out. Thanks for watching. I'm Daniel Vogdanoff and I'll see you next time. Nineteen thousand nine hundred ninety-eight. 19,999, 10,000. Did I say 19,000 and then go to 10,000? Yeah. No, oh, thank <laughs>